I'd never met Charles Bateman before, which of course means he's never met me. Could be interesting. You can keep that. Yeah. Keep it. No, that's right. I'll, I'll leave it there. David, chance, chance. David, good day, David. Chance, chance. Nice to meet you. But even with my peripheral view of the game, I do have one powerful image of Bateman in Hawthorne Strip. Speed, ability, and a lot of flowing hair. Let's start with the hair. What happened to the big dreadlocks? All that, yeah. Yeah. Now I, um, I cut them off at the end of uh, the 2008 yeah. season. But that's the photo I keep seeing. Yeah. Running with the hair going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. I had them for about four or five years, I think it was. But then. Um, at the end of the 2008 season, decided to cut them off for a charity. Oh, for charity. Yeah, I have yeah. to ask you, yeah. why did you um, go that way in the first place? The dreadlocks? Yeah. Um, just something different. Just something different. I'd, um, I'd thought about it for a little while and then uh, <laughs> I think it was early 2002 or three, somewhere around there. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I'll just get them done. Talk about your early days for me. Yep. You're a country boy to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah. I'm from York. Yeah. Yep. How did football get into your life? Um, it was probably through my dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he uh, had taken me up to the the local footy oval there in York. Yeah. And um, how old were you? I reckon I was only sort of four or five. Yeah, everybody it, starts at four yeah, or five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was um, it was called free ball back in those yeah. days. I think it's Oz Kick now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I went up uh, just as a young kid and just fell in love with the game. Were you good at it? For the young Chance Bateman, the draft and then moving to Hawthorne was a major step in his career and his life. You could say it was seminal for the Hawks as well. I'd never been away from home. Never. Um, yeah, that's so, the other story. Yeah, I too, yeah so I, yeah. I hadn't been to uh, boarding school or anything like that. So Had you been on an aeroplane? No. Nah. Oh, actually, in, in 99, I played uh, State 18s footy over in yeah. Brisbane. Yeah. That was the first time I'd ever been on a plane. Yeah. So you go to Melbourne. Yep. And you play for Hawthorne. Yep. How did they receive you? Uh, they were great. They were great as a footy club. Um, well, the reason I ask that is because when you left, you know, they were singing your praises and so on, and they made the point that you kind of opened Hawthorne's eyes to Indigenous players. Yep. Um, my feeling is, geez, they came to that late, didn't they? Yeah. Why, yeah. why so late? Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I mean, sure. there were Indigenous players running around all over the place. Yeah. Yep, I, I think um, it, it's probably a little bit controversial, but um, Hawthorne's um, drafting of Indigenous players, or lack of drafting mm. of Indigenous players, uh, through some of their really successful years, um, I, I've heard um, had a had a bit of a background that they just didn't didn't trust, or they didn't um, realise the potential in, in simply Indigenous didn't want them. Yeah, simply didn't want them. And, um, so you go and knock on the door, break down the door, get in. <laughs> yeah, so... I, um, how did you change their mind? I'm not sure. John Turnbull, um, he, he was the recruiting manager at the time. Yeah. And um, it was it was purely um, uh, football-based, their decision. They, they thought I could play AFL footy. And um, once I was there, um, I, I didn't know much about Hawthorne's history, but once I was there... I realised that they hadn't had a player play an indige indigenous player play 50 games. Mm -hmm. um, so that, when I first got over, that was my goal to, mm -hmm. to be the first indigenous player to play 50. And once I got there, I wanted to be the first to play 100. And how were you feeling in those early days? Because that was the time I think fairly soon your sister died. Is that right? Yeah. So and then what happened to you? 2001, my yeah. sister passed away. Yeah. And uh, I came back for about three or four weeks. It was um, uh, in the back end of the season, so we were still playing footy. And um, as you can imagine, that was a, a really tough time for myself and uh, the family. And yep. at the end of that year, um, for, for no other reason than I wanted to be close to my family, that I asked for a trade back here to Frio or West Coast. And you couldn't get that. And yeah, uh, I couldn't uh, strike up a trade. So uh, speaking to mum and dad at, at the end of that season, they they both said that you know we're always going to be here. Um, yeah. Hawthorne have given you a chance. Yeah. To go back there and and uh, from that moment on, I decided I wanted to be a one club player and and stay over there. How old were you then? Um, 2001. Still young. 
Yeah, would have been early 20s. And you settled into the Melbourne life quite easily then? Yeah, yeah, I, I got, um, my first six to eight weeks over there were just terrible. I, I didn't want to be there. Um, I, I missed home so much. I didn't realise that it was going to be as hard as it was. <laughs> and, um, but once the game started and I'd um, made a few mates that I'd yeah. also been drafted yeah. with at the same time, yeah. um, the season sort of went like that. And before I knew it, I was back here in the off season, so visiting everyone. By definition, then, you were the only Indigenous player at Hawthorne, is that right? Yeah, at that yeah. stage, yeah. And how did you feel about that? Um, I, I wasn't too concerned or anything like that. I, I knew I, the opportunity to um, be a part of the club's history mm. was something that mm. I knew early on mm. that I wanted to achieve. So mm. um, that, was, that was a pretty strong driving force in, in keeping me over there and, and making sure that I, w I wanted to do really well. Do you know what I find? strange in this day and age is that we still keep referring to people as indigenous players separating you yeah you're in this category and you're very good in that. do you approve of that or would you just rather have a level playing field all the same um i, I mean I, i'm a proud aboriginal of person course you are. and um because of the lack of indigenous players at hawthorne mm. um being recognized as an indigenous hawthorne player was something I was quite happy about, but um, yeah, I, I'm exactly the same. I don't think they need to be categorised or, mm. or separate in any way. But um, you know, it, it was a a goal of mine to be part of um, the Hawthorne Football Club's history. Bateman's place in Hawthorne's history is indelible, but time moves on. So did Chance Bateman. I knew that my time was up. I, I wasn't. Right. Um, I wasn't in great form. Um, I was sort of 32 at the time, and that all? Um, yeah. And I, I just knew that my time up, uh, my time at AFL footy was was up. So I didn't. I didn't want to try and hang around any longer. Um, I. I saw myself as being really blessed that um, yeah. I've been able to stay there for, for 13 years. So That is a long time. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And now you're back here. Yep. And Where it all started. hopefully we'll play. Yes. But not yet. What's, what's yeah. the matter with you? Why uh, aren't you out there? I've got a bit of a calf issue at the what's, moment. What's a, what's a bit of a calf issue? Uh, Describe <laughs> that to me. Uh, I've, ha I've had a tight calf. Um, that sounds pretty ordinary. Yeah, since about, uh, <laughs> since about round one. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, we, we well, tried they want to, you out there. Yeah, mate. I've tried to come back a couple of times and it just yeah. doesn't feel quite right yet. So we'll give it another couple of weeks and hopefully mm -hmm. I'm back playing soon. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what's your future as we walk into the sunset? Yeah, at, at the footy club or? Yeah, yeah, yeah football future. Yeah, yeah um, I'm not really looking past this year. Um, just the one year? Yeah, so this is my second year at the club. Yeah. Uh, but, but at my age, you sort of just go on how your body's feeling. Um, whether you're still passionate enough and whether you still think you can play. So have you not just, got the passion? No, I have. That's, yeah. that's why I'm still here. It's just the tight Yeah, it's thing. sort of just the body that you just yeah. have to um, reconsider at the end of each year. But yeah, if I wasn't passionate about it, I wouldn't be here because it's it's like anything. If you don't enjoy it, you don't love it, then you, you're never going to be any good at it. So um, if I ever lost the passion, I'd, I'd walk away from the game. Do you wish you were out there? Yeah, well, I'm going to be out there tonight. Are you? Yeah, I'm going to be doing a little bit of little bit of training tonight, a bit of rehab running. All right. Well, yep. we'll we'll stay and we'll watch you. No worries. We'll see how the leg goes. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers.